What are you doing? Just You're just grabbing a piece of pie and eating it? <laughs> this looks like a five-year-old made it, seriously. it's Jen welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video so before we get into today's video I just wanted to wish you guys all a happy December I'm so excited to be participating in vlogmas this year that means you can expect a new video from me every day in the month of December which sounds crazy even to me saying it out loud <laughs> but I love a good challenge and so here we are I have lots of fun content planned for you so if you're new I hope that you subscribe uh, if you are new I am a full-time working mom and I have two kids and so on this channel I post a lot of content about food family I love to meal prep and do cooking videos and so while I won't be posting an actual blog every single day I will be posting some blogs and I will be posting a video every day. So let's get into the content of today's video, the first day of December. I am very excited to be sharing with you a plan, shop, prep, and cook with me for our family Thanksgiving this year. Now, I have hosted Thanksgiving at my house for a few years now since my husband and I moved into a larger space. We have plenty of room to have everyone over and host and I just love doing it. So we're gonna get started by me showing you what is on the menu for Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm gonna make my shopping list. We're gonna go to the grocery store. I'm gonna show you a grocery haul of all the items that I got. I'm going to cook the Thanksgiving dinner and then at the end, I will show you the finished product. So stick around. Happy December. I hope you come with me on this crazy journey of Vlogmas this year and I am so thankful for each and every one of you. All right, so it is currently the Saturday before Thanksgiving and I'm up here in my office working on my grocery list. I already have my meal plan made out for Thanksgiving. I did get my turkey today and my ham because I wanted to make sure that those didn't sell out before Thanksgiving. So after I'm done showing you the meal plan and grocery list, I'll show you the turkey. Um, I have that in the garage refrigerator starting to thaw. So tomorrow I'll actually be going and getting my ingredients. I'll take you to the store with me to shop, but for now let me show you what I'm planning. Okay, so here is the meal planner that I use every week. This is a Carrie L meal planner. I always have her site linked in the description box below. And the thing I like about this is there is a gathering section. So I kind of already communicated with everyone as to what everyone was bringing. I wrote everything down. They have a section for appetizers, side dishes, main course, desserts, drinks, kids, and supplies. So I kind of tried to denote who was bringing what and then I went ahead and highlighted everything that I'm making. Um, so I am going to make some rolls. My sister is making like a brie appetizer. I just went ahead and bought, uh, you know, canned cranberry sauce because that's what everyone likes the best. Uh, Adam's aunt is bringing a, a fruit salad. I'm going to make a cheese and pickle plate. Um, Karen? Karen's also bringing that's chips. My aunt. Yeah, that's your great aunt. She's also going to bring some chips and dip. Um, I am maybe going to make my sausage stuffing along with stovetop stuffing. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do both yet. Um, but we have some people that don't eat sausage, and so I really like the sausage stuffing, but we'll see. And then um, I'm also going to make mashed potatoes and gravy. My sister's bringing corn casserole. Adam's mom is bringing noodles. Uh, my sister-in-law is bringing green bean casserole, and then I may make some broccoli casserole. I found a new recipe from Food Network that I want to try. I'm making turkey. I have gravy down here again, just so I don't forget it. Ham, and then I'm also wanting to try a new recipe for uh, cranberry jalapeno salsa, so we'll see about that. And then for desserts, we're going to have cookies, uh, pumpkin pie. I'm going to make a banana cream pie, a cherry pie. Um, Adam's aunt is bringing pistachio dip. I'm going to have lemonade, beer, soda, and wine. The kids are going to have some Kraft mac and cheese. And then I'll need um, plates, silverware, and napkins. So plates times two just means I need dinner plates and dessert plates. So I've already started to kind of make my grocery list over here on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to transfer everything that I'm making over here to this list just so I can see it a little bit better and cross it off. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through each sort of dish that I'm making individually, decide what ingredients I need for that and write them down here. 
Okay, so I went ahead and transferred everything over to this list that I'm going to make just because this is easier for me to sort of look at and cross things off on the day of Thanksgiving rather than looking at this list. And then I already went ahead last night and pulled out some of my recipes for my recipe binder that I'll need. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is make um, my grocery list out and check it twice and make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, so I have my grocery list complete. The nice thing about this meal planner is that you can just tear this off take it to the grocery store with you. The only other thing I need to find is my banana cream pie recipe and my cherry pie recipe and add whatever ingredients I need to this, but those are downstairs. So I will see you in the morning when we head to the store. All right, so it is the following morning and I'm getting ready to go get my Thanksgiving groceries, but I just wanted to show you the turkey um, that I put in the refrigerator here. So I just have this in like a really large roasting pan to thaw out. So I put it in there yesterday, which is Saturday. It's about a 20 pound turkey, so we should be good to go um, by Wednesday night so I can brine it. And then the ham, excuse me, I just have down here in this um, drawer. I think I might cook that in the crock pot this year. That's what I did um, last year just to save oven space. I do have a roaster too, so I'm not sure. Anyway, we're gonna go to Aldi and get our Thanksgiving groceries. Sorry, it's very bright. I'm here at Aldi. They actually don't open for another five minutes, but I'm hoping by getting here early and, uh, you know, shopping before the Sunday morning crowd comes in that it will be a little bit easier. I do really like to get my groceries at Aldi, especially when I'm cooking a large meal for a holiday because they honestly have the best prices around here. And if I know I'm gonna have to buy like four pounds of butter and <laughs> just a lot of food, it's the most cost effective to get it here at Aldi. Now, I won't be able to get everything here. Um, there are some things on my list that I think I'll probably have to either go um, to Walmart or Hy-Vee for, but I want to go here first, see what all I can get crossed off my list, and then we'll decide where else to go after this. So I do need to get some bread for my stuffing. I'm very intrigued about this. It's actually bread made for stuffing. Have you guys seen this before? I might get it. This is a really good price on cranberries. I already bought mine at Hy-Vee, but these are 99 cents for 12 ounces, which is like, I think a third of the price I got them for at Hy-Vee. This is a really good price for onions too, $1.19 for a three pound bag. I already have my potatoes or I would have got those here too. I need to find some celery. Oh, here we go, 89 cents. So I was able to get all of my produce here except for plums. They did not have plums, but the rest of it they had, so I was happy about that. So I know this is supposed to be Thanksgiving, but they have these really cute Christmas mats for $6.99. I think I'm gonna get one because I don't have one for our front door that's Christmas themed. Okay, I'm not getting this, but they have riced cauliflower stuffing. All right, so I finished up in Aldi. Um, that only took me about 50 minutes, and um, it was around right around $100, which I was very happy with. So now I need to go to Hy-Vee and just pick up a couple more things that I couldn't get there. Um, they did not have the frozen roads rolls. They did not have um, lemonade mix in like a large batch that I need to make um, for Thanksgiving. I wanna pick up some beer. Um, chicken flavored ramen, they had like a 12 pack, but I didn't wanna buy that much. That's for the broccoli casserole. So I need to pick that up. I need to get some sweet pickles, some stovetop stuffing, some tapioca plums, and some cherries for the cherry pie. All right, so I'm here at Hy-Vee to get the rest of my Thanksgiving groceries, and when we get home, I'm gonna show you everything that I got for making Thanksgiving dinner. All right, so I think I've got everything uh, laid out here that I got at the grocery store. Of course, I just started talking, so Murphy has to come say hi. Hi, Murphy. So let's go through all of this, and I'll show you what I got and what everything is for. Okay, so first we have the turkey. Um, this will be thawed out by probably the day before. Thanksgiving, Wednesday, I'll be brining it. This was actually uh, a free turkey from Hy-Vee uh, where the company that Adam works for always either gives them a free ham or a turkey. You could choose either one at Thanksgiving time, so that's nice. I had them weigh this for me um, and it is around 19 and a half 
pounds, so about a 20 pound turkey. So that should be good. We actually almost ran out of turkey last year and I think I only got like a 14 or 15 pound turkey. Um, so hopefully this will be enough for this year. I also have a ham, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, I left my cranberries in this bag here just because they are a little bit wet and I don't want them getting all over my refrigerator. These are going to be for the cranberry jalapeno salsa with the cream cheese dip. I'm very excited to make that. That's one thing that I'll also have to do the night before. I got some cilantro for the cranberry salsa, uh, some garlic. This will mostly be for the turkey and the turkey stock. I got three sweet potatoes. Um, these will be for the sweet potato casserole, obviously. One bag of, five pound bag of potatoes. I also have about two pounds of potatoes in my pantry, so I'll likely combine these with that. Um, we will have 16 people total here. Um, and so, I mean, technically I probably could have done 10 pounds of potatoes, but we're gonna have so many sides that I think <laughs> it's gonna be fine if I do about seven pounds. Uh, I grabbed a bag of Granny Smith apples, so I really only needed two apples for the stuffing recipe, my sausage stuffing, but Aldi only had bags of apples, and I figured, well, I'll just buy the whole bag because Connor really likes green apples, and he'll eat, so he'll eat the rest of them. I got some bananas for my banana cream pie, a bag of onions. I was just going to get one package of celery, but I decided to get two um, just because I'll be using this in several different recipes, and for um, I usually stuff the inside of the turkey um, with like onions, carrots, and celery. So that will be for that. And then my uh, recipe for the sausage stuffing calls for celery as well. Uh, I got some carrots, some jalapenos for the cranberry salsa. Two packages of broccoli. These will be for the broccoli casserole. Some green onions. These are also for the cranberry salsa. I got some parsley for my turkey. Uh, some eggs and then I got a bunch of different cheeses so these will be I'm gonna make like a pickle tray with pickles and olives and different cheeses and things like that for an appetizer so I just got some Colby Jack cheese um, usually all the kids like that kid-friendly cheese some pepper jack I also saw this dill Havarti I've had it before it's really good so I grabbed that and then some of this uh, champagne sharp cheddar cheese I like cheese and I like champagne, so why not have it together? Uh, and then this yellow sharp cheddar cheese is for the broccoli casserole. Uh, I got three bags of frozen frozen cherries. This is for my homemade cherry pie. So I I don't know if I'll need all of these or not, um, but I decided to get three bags because I can't remember exactly how many pounds the recipe called for. I feel like it was like two and a half pounds, so I want to make sure that I had enough. Uh, this is the ham that I got, so I will be doing this alongside the turkey. This is just a spiral sliced honey ham. Um, I think I mentioned this before. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do this in the crock pot or if I'm going to do it in my electric roaster. We'll see. I grabbed some sour cream for, I can't remember what this is for. It's for something. Oh. <laughs> I think it's for the broccoli casserole. Uh, some hot pork sausage. This is for my sausage stuffing. Uh, two packages of cream cheese for the jalapeno cranberry salsa. And I ended up getting four pounds of butter. I don't exactly know how much I'm going to need, um, but I thought that this would at least <laughs> get me through. And if I have extra butter, obviously we'll use it up at some point. I grabbed some milk. Uh, that's for several different recipes and then Aldi did have the Martinelli sparkling cider So I went ahead and got two bottles of this. This is non-alcoholic. So that's for the kids They think that's super fun when they get to drink that uh, I got some heavy whipping cream for uh, whipped cream for the top of the banana cream pie Some half and half for the mashed potatoes. Uh, I did get a bottle of Moscato I, I do have some other wine in my closet as well or in my pantry that I'm going to set out on some ice. So this will be for drinking. And then this is actually for the turkey brine recipe, calls for a bottle of Riesling. So I grabbed that. I got some crackers for the um, cranberry salsa and then also to go with the cheese. So Aldi brand Wheat Thins and Ritz crackers. And then I grabbed several different kinds of like pickles and olives. So I got the baby dill pickles from Aldi. I got the uh, little green olives from Hy-Vee. 
Adam already tried one of these and he said it was really good. They had these at Aldi, stuffed green olives with white cheddar tea. Those looked good. And then I also got some sweet pickles and then some black olives. Uh, so for chicken broth, I couldn't remember if I had chicken broth in the freezer or not. And I do actually have some in there. So I probably didn't need to get this, but the uh, stuffing recipe does call for chicken broth. My uh, classic jellied cranberry sauce. That is what we prefer. Fennel seeds. I got these for the uh, turkey brine. I'm really excited to try brining my turkey this year. I have not done that before, so that will be a fun challenge for me, I think. Oh, there's my grocery list. Uh, okay, what else? So, boxed mac and cheese. Yes, I got this for... <laughs> The kiddos, I'll make this on the side. Um, and then I do also make stovetop stuffing. Um, we have um, someone in our family that doesn't eat sausage. And so when I make my sausage stuffing, then um, they can have the regular stovetop stuffing. Uh, okay, so there are no plums in the grocery store anywhere because um, apparently they're out of season. I was talking to one of the produce managers at Hy-Vee. So, the cherry pie recipe that I have calls for plum, wait, yes, plums. And I thought, well, if I can't find any fresh plums, I'll just get baby food plums. But I couldn't find any baby food plums either, and I found prunes. And so I thought, you know what, we're going to try this. I don't know how it's going to work out, but we're going to try it anyway. Uh, I also got some banana extract uh, for the banana cream pie, some tapioca, minute tapioca for the cherry pie. And then I have a large um, like beverage container uh, with a spigot. And so usually I'll just make up some lemonade in there. This is just sugar-free lemonade um, for anyone that wants it. And then I got some mini marshmallows for the top of the sweet potato casserole, some chicken ramen, the broccoli uh, casserole recipe that I have calls for this. And if I didn't mention it before, all of these recipes that I use will be linked down below in the description box if you wanna try them out. Um, these are the Rhodes frozen dinner rolls that I use. These are the best. Uh, you can see they're like already formed. All you have to do is put them out a couple hours. Well, usually I do try to do it in the morning of Thanksgiving um, before we eat and they rise up and they are so delicious brushed with melted butter. Uh, okay. So I have never seen this before. I showed you this in the store stuffing herb bread. So it's apparently just bread that is seasoned with herbs uh, for stuffing. So I'm excited to try this for my sausage stuffing recipe. I got some aluminum foil just in case we ran out. And then also some recipes that I've seen for turkeys call for using cheesecloth to cover the turkey with and then you pour melted butter over it and it makes for a really crispy skin. So I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, I got these dessert plates at Aldi. I think there's eight in each one, so I got three of those. Uh, 24 of the Chinette plates. These are my very favorite paper plates for family gatherings because they're large and they're very sturdy. Um, I picked up some forks at Aldi. I wanted to actually get a combo pack of like forks, knives, and spoons, but they didn't have them. And then I thought, well, really, what are we going to be using spoons or knives for anyway? Um, and then I also had some uh, napkins and some silverware left over. So I'll just go ahead and put this out. Some of these are from like birthday parties and stuff. So it's kind of mismatched. Um, and then these are the Ziploc big bags. I actually got these at Walmart. This is what I'm going to use to brine the turkey in. And then for beer, um, I got, they actually had these on sale at Hy-Vee. So they were $8 for a six pack. And then if you bought two six packs, you got $4 off. So I got both of these six packs for 12 bucks, which I thought was a good deal for Line and Kugels. So I got one six pack of the Northwoods Lager, one six pack of the Honey Vice, and then some Diet Coke. So I guess the drink will have, I have bottled water, I have Diet Coke, I have beer, I have sugar-free lemonade, cider, and wine. So I think we'll be good to go. So this is everything that I got. It's a lot. <laughs> A lot of groceries, but I'm super excited. I always get super excited to cook big family meals. I just love it. So I'm going to put all this stuff away, and the next time I see you will be Wednesday evening when we start our cooking. 
All right, so it is actually a Tuesday evening, and I was counting backwards from the time that we were gonna eat on Thanksgiving, and I determined that I need to start the brine tonight for the turkey so that I can put it in the brine in the morning and have it uh, brining for 24 hours. So I'll post a link to this recipe down below. It's a Martha Stewart recipe. So in this uh, large pot here, I have some mustard seeds, some peppercorns, some fennel seeds, and some bay leaves. And then I'm just gonna add one and a half cups of kosher salt and then one quart of cold water. And then I will um, bring this to a boil, let all of the salt dissolve. And then this will go in with seven quarts of cold water into a big bag with the turkey. Okay, so this is the brine mixture all finished. Boom, what? This is super concentrated um, because, I didn't say I wouldn't let you, I just said not this year. So obviously there is, this is very concentrated, there's a lot of salt in here, but this is going to be diluted with seven more quarts of water and then one bottle of Riesling wine and it also calls for two sliced up onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there right now. And then six cloves of smashed garlic. Um, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wait until the morning to put the turkey in the brine because it only is supposed to brine for 24 hours. And um, I will be cooking it Thursday morning so I wanna put it in the brine Wednesday morning. So. Here is the turkey. Uh, it was still a little bit frozen on the inside, so I removed the pop-up timer and the little plastic thingy, and there's the neck, so I'm just letting it defrost a little bit more, and then I'm going to take the neck and the gizzards and everything out of the middle um, and save those for stock. So here's my turkey in the bag. Uh, if I didn't mention before, I don't think I did. I got these uh, huge Ziploc bags at Walmart. I actually ordered them on Walmart grocery pickup. So I just have it sitting in this roasting pan here, obviously, because I don't want it to leak out all over my refrigerator. Um, the recipe says to brine these for 24 hours, but I talked to Adam and he said that he thinks it's fine if I brine them for 36, or actually even if I brine them for 24, even if I take it out of the brine tomorrow night, they'll also be fine that I can cook it Thursday morning. So. Here's the brine, and I'm gonna dump this in here along with seven more quarts of water, uh, a bottle of wine, and then this is the neck. So this turkey didn't come with any like hearts, hearts, like plural, like a turkey has more than one heart, with any heart or gizzards or liver or anything. Um, so I'm just gonna hold this in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow night I will make stock with this for the gravy. All right, so here it is. I, let, I kind of tied this up like a little turkey sachet here uh, just because this, uh, If I mean, I guess if I had a five gallon bucket, that would be ideal, but then the problem is fitting a five gallon bucket into my refrigerator, which probably isn't gonna happen. Um, so I just kind of tied this up here so that this part wouldn't fall over with liquid and it seems to be okay. So what I'm gonna do is Put this in the refrigerator overnight and then I think in the morning I will just kind of like squish it around a little bit make sure that it's still kind of mixed up um, but yeah that's that should be okay for the next day or so hello friends so it is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving it's about 4 15 Adam is actually at the movies right now with the kids he took them to see Frozen 2 and so I have my apron on and I am not quite sure what my game plan is for tonight yet. I know I need to start working on the pies because I want to get those done tonight. But other than that, I need to look at my list and find out what I want to get started on. So first order of business is to take care of all these dishes. Um, there's not that many. I did have to hand wash a lot of dishes last night after dinner. So before I get started cooking, I just want to get all of that cleaned up and then we'll get right into it. So I got most of the dishes done. I do have my salad spinner there in the sink 
soaking, that's fine. Um, but I washed up that pot. So I think the first thing that I want to work on tonight is the pies. So I'm going to do the banana cream pie first. And I'm using this recipe out of the Better Homes and Gardens new cookbook. This is from 1989. You guys know I love my, well, I don't know if this is really considered a vintage cookbook, but anyway, it's an older cookbook. Um, and so essentially you make this vanilla cream pie, except you do the banana version. And the baked pastry shell is on 293. Pastry for single crust pie. So that is what I'm gonna start with. So I like to use my food processor to make pie crust. Um, I just think it's easiest. Obviously, if you don't have a food processor, you can use a pastry cutter, which I've done many times before. It looks like this. Um, but essentially, any pie crust is sort of the same method. So you cut together some sort of fat, either butter or shortening, flour and salt. So in here I have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, um, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a third of a cup of shortening. I'm using butter-flavored shortening today. It's just the Crisco brand that comes in the sticks like this. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of um, pulse this together until it becomes like um, combined and in like the shape of small peas. And then I'm gonna drizzle some ice water in. So you can see that it's coming together and then I don't think I can well maybe I can film this part. I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this video, all these videos in Vlogmas without a voiceover because otherwise it's just too time consuming to edit all these and get them up the next day. Um, so three to four tablespoons of water. But basically just drizzle some in until you start to see it coming together in a ball. That is it. So, here's your pie crust. Uh, I was going to say, I feel like I added maybe a little bit too, water, too much water, but I don't think I did. Okay, I'm going to turn this out on a floured board. Alright, so I'm going to sprinkle some flour out here on my counter. And then here's my dough. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour over that. One of my most favorite things about having a butcher block counter is having the ability to have like this butcher block surface to like roll things like this out, roll like pastry and cookies and everything. Oh, it's just so. It's such a great surface to roll stuff like this out on. So this doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna trim off the edges. Since we're making a banana cream pie, um, it is not going to require a top crust. So this is falling apart a little bit, um, which I'm a little annoyed at. I don't know if I added too much water or what, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so once once you think it's big enough for your pie plate, what I like to do is just fold it into quarters. So fold it once like this, see it's gonna fall apart and that's fine, we can fix it. And then fold it again, and then here's my pie plate. And I'm just going to pick it up and put it so that the point is in the center of the circle. That way when you unfold it, like I just did, and it falls apart. <laughs> this is hilarious because I made an apple pie video, homemade apple pie video, um, around Thanksgiving time, like in November. And I, the, the crust was like beautiful and perfect. I had zero problems. So it kind of makes me wonder if it's this butter flavored Crisco that's um, causing the issue because I use regular Crisco in the other, but I don't know. I don't think that would make a difference, but the good thing with pie crust is that it's not, uh, you know, it's forgiving. You can sort of like pat it into the pan, whatever you need to do. I mean, basically we're just making a shell for the bottom of the banana cream pie and then we're gonna blind bake it. This looks like a five-year-old made it, seriously. 
All right, well, I think that's good enough. Um, so the recipe says to prick the bottom and sides with a fork and bake in a 450 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. So let me grab a fork. You could totally also buy a pre-made pie shell, which is honestly what I have done a lot in the past, but for some reason I felt overzealous this year. So here's my very imperfect pie crust. This is gonna go in the oven. I'll show you what it looks, what it looks like when it comes out. For the banana cream filling in this saucepan, I have three fourths of a cup of white sugar and one fourth of a cup of cornstarch. And I'm going to pour in three cups of milk. And this says to whisk it over medium high heat until it's thickened. Basically, you're just making a custard. And if you, I mean, there are a lot of recipes out there for, you know, banana cream pies that are made with, you know, instant pudding mix and stuff like that. And I've made them plenty of times before. But sometimes I just like to challenge myself with <laughs> making homemade custard. Um, and it honestly does taste better, I think. So I'm just gonna stir this until it is thickened up. So for the filling, you'll also need some egg yolks. I just have four egg yolks in here that I separated, and I'm going to whip these up just a little bit. So what will happen is once the milk mixture starts to thicken, we'll turn it down to a simmer, cook it for two minutes until it thickens. We'll add a little bit of this to the egg yolks to temper the egg yolks so that um, they don't scramble. And we'll add the mixture back to here, add a pat of butter, some vanilla, and some banana extract. Here's my crust. <laughs> you can see it's looking a little ragged around the edges, but you know, such is life. I have two bananas. I'm gonna slice these bananas into the bottom of the shell and then we'll put the filling in. Okay, so we're gonna see if this filling fits in here. So my preference is to have a deep dish pie shell, which I only have one of, and which I decided to use <laughs> for my cherry pie. So we'll see. Ah, we'll just do it. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, look at that. Okay, so this is very, very hot. So when you make a cream pie like this, what you want to do is, um, I'll probably let this cool a little bit just so it's not so steamy. And then I layer um, plastic wrap like right over the top of it so it doesn't form a film. You put it in the refrigerator overnight Tomorrow will be when I'll whip the cream and put that on top along with sliced, more, more sliced banana and that will be the banana cream pie. So I'm gonna let this chill, not chill, just sit for a little bit we're gonna move on to the cherry pie. Oh my God, that's hot. Woo. So this is the recipe that I'm using for the cherry pie. This is Cook's Illustrated Revolutionary Recipes. I'll type this um, recipe out down below and link this cookbook. It is a fabulous cookbook. You can see that it's very big. It has a ton of great recipes in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is make the crust first because you also need the food processor to make the filling. And if I go ahead and make the crust first, then I can take that out of the food processor and just have it in the fridge chilling while I make the filling. So I will say that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, regarding these Cook's Illustrated recipes, I feel like they're a little bit fussy. Like it wants you to like grate some of the butter and then add some of the flour and the butter and like add it in different steps. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna make it like I normally do pie crust, except these are the ingredients that I'm using. So instead of shortening, I'm using 20 tablespoons of unsalted butter chilled, two and a half cups 
of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and half a cup of ice water. So in here I have the flour, sugar, and salt, and I'm gonna work on cubing up my butter. So I cubed up my butter and put it in here. So now we are going to process this and add in the ice water. this dough comes together in comparison to the butter flavored Crisco dough so this is a this is obviously a recipe for a double a double crust pie because we're making a cherry pie so it's gonna have a top this seems like it's a lot better already um, I shouldn't have done that okay Put this out like this. So when you make a double crust pie, you can just basically kind of form this into a oval, then you cut it in half, and that way you know one's for your top and one's for your bottom crust. So I'm gonna, I don't know, this dough, this dough feels a lot nicer talked to people about pie crust before and you know some people prefer um, shortening some people prefer butter some people use both I think that honestly um, butter makes a more tender pie. not not necessarily more tender but it just has more flavor you know like you have that buttery flavor as opposed to shortening which sometimes cannot really taste like much um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just a matter of preference. I just wanted to make both kinds for Thanksgiving. So I thought it'd be fun to try both kinds out. Okay. So here is my dough round. Very unperfect. So I'm going to do the same thing. Fold this into quarters. I can already tell this dough is much nicer. I've said that multiple times now. Okay. So this is a deeper dish pie crust. And I probably need to get another one of these because honestly, this is the type of um, pie dish that I prefer for making pies because it's deeper and it holds more filling. So here is the bottom crust. So what we're gonna do is just make sure you lift it up and kind of pat it into the pan. Make sure that there's no air in between the crust and the pie plate. And then you can just use a paring knife to kind of like trim the edges off. If you want to save the rest of the pie crust, you can, um, sometimes people will like dip these in butter and cinnamon and sugar and bake them. That's good with like the leftover pie scraps or whatever, or crust scraps, I guess it would be. Okay. So there's our bottom crust. Uh, at the risk of this getting warm here in the kitchen, what I'm gonna do is cover it with plastic wrap uh, and then stick it in the refrigerator while we make the filling. And then my other dough ball here, I'm gonna do the same thing with. Um, obviously too, the more you work with pie dough with your hands, the softer it'll get and the butter starts to melt, uh, which isn't good. So you wanna kind of minimize that. But we can go ahead and stick these. I'm gonna stick both these in the fridge and we'll get started on the filling. So full disclosure, I've never made a cherry pie from scratch before. I've made some using canned cherry pie filling. These are, I have the package here, uh, unsweetened dark sweet cherries, they're frozen. Fresh cherries were called for in the recipe, but they are not in season right now. So instead we are using these. This is about two and a half pounds. I have defrosted them in the microwave so that they are not frozen. So what the recipe calls for is to put these with um, two plums into a food processor. I mentioned this before, we don't have plums right now. So I'm using some prune 
baby food. And you might think that's gross, but quite honestly, I had a carrot cake recipe um, that I still use to this day, honestly, Adam's texting me, um, that calls for carrot baby food. Because all it really is is just pureed fruit or vegetables. That's all it is. So we're gonna mix this up and see how this goes. I'm pretty excited. I think this is gonna turn out delicious, but we'll see. I'm gonna add one cup of these cherries into the food processor. And I read on the baby food package that one of these equals two pieces of fruit. That's what we're gonna go off of. I have to say, it was very odd for me to be buying <laughs> baby food. I was like, wow, these packages are so different now. I haven't bought baby food for probably over six years now because Connor's seven and a half. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. Okay, there's my lid. By the way, I didn't wash this out because all that's in it is just flour and sugar and butter from the crust. It says to strain this. I don't really, I don't really think I'm gonna have to strain it because it's not fresh fruit, it's fruit puree. I can't talk, fruit puree. Um, so I think I'll just be able to use it just like that. I have a large bowl here to mix the filling up in. I'm gonna add my cherries. If I was smart, I would have just defrosted them in that very large bowl, but obviously I didn't know what I was doing. I'm gonna put in this fruit. Try to say that out loud. Fruit puree. It's kind of hard to say. So I'm gonna add this puree in, and then I'm gonna gather the rest of my uh, cherry pie filling ingredients. Okay, so my cherry pie filling has been sitting for 15 minutes, so I'm gonna pour it into the crust. And then I'm gonna make a lattice topped pie instead of just like a regular crust rolled out. Adam ordered me a pastry roller, so I wanna try that out. So I'm just gonna spread this out and then I will. Is that cranberry sauce? No, it's cherry pie. Now I'm going to roll out the top crust. And this is one beaten egg with a tablespoon of cold water. And this just helps the <laughs> pressed brown egg. You know what I think I forgot? What's that? What? I think it said to dot it with butter. How do you dot it with butter? Before you put the top crust on. Oh, like I don't know, like on the cherry filling? Yeah. Yeah. What's that gonna do? I can still do it though. Can you just like... Yeah! 
Egg, hey, no. <laughs> butter. <laughs> it's like a real egg. It's like a scrambled egg pie. So I'll just put it, I'll just put some on the parts that don't have crust. You give it a big If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. You know that 40% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Really? Yeah. I'm looking at that. That's because Emma watches your videos and she doesn't have subscription. Why does she watch my videos? I don't know. Why does anybody watch the videos? Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. People ask me to I tag and you. And I tell them they wouldn't like it. Your eye tags you anywhere. <laughs> You tell them. Go they wash your face off, Connor. You got food all over your face. All right. So this goes uh, 400 grades for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna get started on this cranberry jalapeno dip, which you have to make the night before. Well, you have to make the cranberry salsa the night before anyway. So I'll, if I didn't mention this before, I'll link all of these recipes down below. But I have 12 ounces of cranberries here that I have just rinsed. These are fresh cranberries. The recipe calls for chopping these in a food chopper. I don't have a food chopper. I have a food processor and I have a knife. So it says specifically not to do them in a food chopper, or I'm sorry, not to do them in a food processor or it will, you know, pulverize the cranberries. So I'm just going to chop these up, put them in a bowl, and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. So the moral of the story is, is that if you have a food chopper, I would definitely use that. It took me a while. <laughs> to chop up these cranberries with a knife, but I did it. And I added in some green onion. I'm also gonna add in some cilantro, lemon juice, one uh, chopped jalapeno, um, anywhere from three-fourths of a cup to one cup of sugar and a pinch of salt, and stir this together. Here is what the finished cranberry salsa looks like. So I'm going to cover this up and put this in the refrigerator and then um, I'm going to set out two 8-ounce blocks of cream cheese, so in the morning we'll whip up the cream cheese, spread it into a dish, and then top it with this. So I, I was trying to remember if I've made this before, and I, I think I have, but I can't remember how it was. So it must have been a really long time ago, but I'm excited to try this tomorrow. Okay, so I'm starting on the turkey stock for the gravy. So I have in here the neck that I pulled out of the turkey last night. It is sauteing in some butter and olive oil. Next, I'm going to add some celery that I chopped up and washed, some carrots, garlic, um, onion, and then I have some herbs in here. So I had an herb pot on my back deck over the summer, and these were sort of the last of everything that I pulled inside. So I'm not sure how much of this I'm gonna put in, but I'm probably gonna put the thyme in, some of the parsley, and maybe the chives maybe a little bit of the rosemary, and then I'll season it up with salt and pepper and add some cold water. Okay, so I put um, the rest of the stock ingredients in here, all of the veggies chopped up. I saved some of these herbs because I think I'm gonna end up putting those inside the turkey when I roast it in the morning. Um, and then I put some peppercorns, some bay leaves, and some kosher salt. Next, I'm gonna put in some water. I poured in about two cups of cold water, so I'm gonna bring this to a boil and let it simmer. Uh, probably for about two hours until it is concentrated and tastes like turkey. And then this is what we'll use along with the drippings from the roast turkey to make the gravy. So here's the cherry pie. I, I feel like I had to bake this a lot longer than the recipe called for. It called for like half an hour at 400 degrees and then half an hour at 350. I think I had it in the oven for an extra 20 minutes and I had to turn the oven back up to 375, but I feel like it's finally done now. I was just waiting for it to get all browned on the top and bubble up. So this is just gonna cool. Um, if you are making a fruit pie, it's actually, it's actually better the next day. So the first day, if it's like warm and you cut into it, it's gonna like ooze out all over. But if you wait another day, just leave it out on the counter at room temperature. Um, this, you know, the fruit and the tapioca and everything will help it firm up again. And then you can cut it like a regular pie. So that's just going to cool. Um, I mean, I have a couple hours before I go to bed yet. So I feel like probably 
it will cool enough that I can drape it with some parchment paper or something before I go to bed. So what I just worked on was all of the veggies, chopping them up for the sausage and herb stuffing. So I'm not gonna actually make this until tomorrow, um, but I can obviously chop the veggies beforehand. So it calls for chopped celery, chopped onion, chopped green apple, and chopped parsley. So I just have a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these into here. Um, and then I think I'm gonna work on chopping up my bread. Um, this is herb bread that I got from Aldi. So I'm going to cube this up and get it onto a sheet tray. Um, I'm probably just going to drape it with a tea towel so it can dry out a little bit. When you make dressing or stuffing, you don't want to use fresh bread because it will absorb too much of the, um, the liquid. So you want to dry it out a little bit if it's not already stale. All right, so here's my bread all cubed up. So just a tip here, if you want to make this the morning of Thanksgiving or you know, like right before your meal, you can put this in the oven and dry the bread out, but since I'm prepping this ahead of time, um, I'm just gonna leave this out on the counter and probably covered with a tea towel and the bread will dry out so that I can make dressing out of it in the morning. All right, so my, my turkey stock is still working, but it's about almost nine o'clock right now. I just cut up all the cheese for like the cheese and pickle tray for tomorrow. So this is champagne sharp white cheddar cheese, some yellow extra sharp cheddar, um, pepper deck cheese and dill Havarti. So I'm going to get these in the fridge and then all I have to do tomorrow is assemble the tray. So this turkey stock has been simmering for about an hour and a half and it might be the most delicious stock I've ever smelled. So I'm going to strain this into a container and then get it into the refrigerator to cool overnight. Happy Thanksgiving morning. <laughs> What time is it? It's 6.02 in the morning. And I'm up getting ready to put the turkey in the oven. So let me show you what I'm working on. Uh, I don't know if I showed you last night how the stock turned out. I can't remember whether I did or not. Um, but I think this is an eight cup measuring cup. So I ended up with that. And then this is a little bit more in there too. So that will be plenty. We can save the rest for turkey soup. My battery's gonna die. I got me some Diet Mountain Dew to get through the morning here. Um, this is three sticks of melted butter with one bottle of dry white wine, and that's what we're gonna use to baste the turkey. So I have my turkey right here in the brine bag. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, rinse it off, and we'll get it into the pan and ready to go into the oven. So the recipe I'm using for the turkey is a Martha Stewart recipe. And it calls to roast it line or you know topped with cheesecloth that's been soaked with the butter and wine mixture so I'm gonna do that and then this is a roasting pan I actually did not have a proper roasting pan with a rack so I went ahead and ordered this one on Amazon a few weeks ago so I'd have it for um, Thanksgiving this year and this is Cuisinart one. Um, I think I got this on sale, so it was around 30 or $40, but I'll link it down below. I still need to rinse off my turkey. I just realized that <clears throat> this recipe calls for stuffing in the turkey, but I don't really like to do that. So I think I'm just gonna stuff it with like onions and carrots and some herbs and something like that. All right, so here's my completed turkey ready to go in the oven. I have stuffed it with onion, garlic, lemon, and some herbs. I tied the legs together, and then I rubbed some softened butter over the top. This was the cheesecloth that was in the wine and butter mixture, and that is it. So this is going to go in the oven for 450, or at 450 degrees for 30 minutes, and then we're going to turn it down to 350 and let it cook the rest of the way. All right, so turkey's in the oven. It is not even 6.30. And if I didn't mention, I think we're gonna try to eat around noon. We might end up eating around one, depending on what time everything gets done. But these are the rolls um, that I'm using. I probably showed you these in the grocery haul. So these just have to thaw and rise for about three to five hours. I'll actually probably put them over here by um, the oven so that they get warm. Um, but I just put them out on a baking tray with parchment paper. I'm gonna make what is this? Four times six, 24 um, rolls. 
and then I just put a little bit of plastic wrap over them that's sprayed with cooking spray so that it doesn't stick just so they don't get dried out on the top and I think if my ham will fit in here in my kasori I think that's this is what I'm going to use to cook my ham um, so I got this out last night it has a bunch of different functions on here you can bake and roast and sort of customize the temperature so hopefully fingers crossed my ham will fit in there it doesn't fit <laughs> So now I have to do plan B, which might be getting out my electric roaster, which I didn't want to do. Um, it's all the way up there. And it's way too big for this ham. Like, I don't need a 27-quart roasting oven for a 10-pound ham. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if this will fit in my slow cooker. I don't know. We're going to try that next. All right, so it says to cook it for two and a half more hours basting every 30 minutes. I'm just gonna pour some of this over because it's a little thick. I might have to put it back in the microwave. So sadly enough, I had to get the roaster. <laughs> I had to get the roaster out, which is fine. Um, so I just have this ham in here. Now this has a honey glaze, but you don't put it on until like the last 30 minutes or so. It's a spiral cut ham. So I'm gonna turn this on to 300, and this will probably cook for about three hours. I did put a cup of water in the bottom. I always do that when I bake hams, just because I don't want anything to dry out because no one wants a dry ham. And even if this gets done before dinner, I can always turn it down um, and just keep it warm while we're waiting to eat. So I'm gonna work on finishing up the cranberry jalapeno salsa. Uh, I set two eight ounce packages of cream cheese out overnight. The recipe calls to whip the cream cheese, put it in the bottom of your dish. I'm just using this oval dish. This is like a vintage. Uh, I think it's, oh no, I was going to say Pyrex, but it's Anchor Hawking. Anyway, so I'm going to whip up this cream cheese until it's nice and fluffy, spread it into the bottom of here. Okay, whipped cream cheese is in here. Here is the salsa. So the recipe says to strain out the liquid, so I'm just going to do that in the sink real quick before I top it on the cream cheese. I not believe how delicious this salsa smells. Oh. If it wasn't seven o'clock in the morning, I would be eating some right now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get this in the fridge. Um, I also poured myself a cup of coffee and I got out my chicken stock for my sausage stuffing. So I guess you'd really call it dressing since we're not putting it in the bird. Um, I did end up putting my bread cubes into the oven just for a little bit to get them to dry out. Um, I don't wanna make the stuffing too early though because um, I don't just want it to sit and get all soggy. I don't really like super dry stuffing, but I don't like it like wet and runny either. Um, so I'll just let this sit out. I'm gonna put this sausage um, back in the refrigerator. Let's see where we're at here. I was so excited that I got a lot of things crossed off my list last night, but okay, so rolls and butter. We got that working. Cranberry sauce, that's in a can. Cheese, pickles, and olives. I'll start assembling that. It's probably around 10.30 or 11. Uh, cranberry salsa crackers, that's done. Ham is working. Turkey is working. we got to make the gravy. Mashed potatoes. Uh, okay, so I guess what I could do next is start peeling some potatoes. Um, I do make my... I'm sorry. This is just... This is how we're going to roll this morning <laughs> in our pajamas until I take a shower. But... Um, I do my mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot because they cook very quickly. You can mix them up, you know, whip them up, mash them, whatever, right in the Instant Pot. And then it also has a keep warm function. So you're only using one pot and it's super convenient. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can also just mash them on the stove, transfer them to a slow cooker, and put them on keep warm and keep them warm that way. I've done that before. I did that a lot of times before I had an Instant Pot. So, all right, we're going to carry on. All right, so here's the turkey. I've been basting it every half hour, and it still has an hour left to go, and then we will take the cheesecloth off and cook it for another hour. Okay, so I'm gonna start cooking the broccoli for the broccoli casserole. 
I this recipe says to like boil the broccoli and then shock it. I'm not gonna do all that. I'm just gonna cook it until it's a little bit tender. And the rolls are rising nicely. I had to turn the roaster down just because the ham was I felt like it was cooking really fast, so I turned it down to 200. And then Adam helped me clean off the counter. So this part over here is gonna be for the desserts. So I just have some dessert plates out here and some napkins and forks. This is my cherry pie from last night. And then over here I'm gonna put drinks. So I got out my big um, pitcher, what is, what is this called? Drink dispenser? I'm just gonna make lemonade in there. And then I have a tub here. I'll probably put a little bit of ice in there and then just put like some cans of soda and bottled water. Um, and then I lit my, I had one pumpkin candle from Mrs. Myers, which I found in the cupboard last night. So I lit that here in the bathroom, just put a little pumpkin. So I didn't really decorate a whole lot for Thanksgiving just because tomorrow I'm gonna decorate for Christmas. So the broccoli's done. I'm just gonna let it cool in this bowl until I assemble the casserole. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start on my stuffing, my sausage stuffing. Sorry, that's the Roomba. So I just have the veggies in here that I chopped up last night, dumped them in there with a stick of butter and I'm gonna saute those until they're soft. So I just got my potatoes peeled. This is probably about eight pounds because I had a five pound bag and then I had a partial five pound bag. So I'm going to rinse these in cold water um, get them cut up and into the instant pot. So Adam went ahead and mixed this up for me, the sauteed veggies in with the bread cubes. Uh, next I'm going to work on cutting up my potatoes and getting them into the instant pot. I'm just going to cover them with water and let them soak until it's time to cook them. Potato mashed potatoes in the instant pot only take like 12 minutes so I don't have to cook those until much later. And then I've also got my sausage sauteing up for this um, dressing as well. So the sausage is done. I'm just gonna put this in with the bread. I did not drain it. This was hot sausage and um, I got it from Aldi. There was not a lot of grease in here at all. So that is the dressing. I'm not gonna put the chicken broth in it yet because I'm not ready to bake it, but that's pretty much done except for the chicken broth. And then I peeled and cubed up the sweet potatoes. Just be really careful when you're cutting these because they are super hard and hard to cut and you can um, cut yourself really bad if you're not careful. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start boiling these now. Um, it's 920, but the sweet potato casserole can be assembled ahead of time and then you can just bake it when you're ready to. Whew. All right, so here's the turkey after it's been cooking for three hours. So what I need to do is carefully remove the cheesecloth, baste it again, put it back into the oven for either an hour or an hour and a half until it reaches temperature. I don't think I've ever baked a turkey like this brown and crispy before and it looks beautiful. So uh, I'm gonna put this back in the oven. So when I was taking the cheesecloth off, it's funny cause like uh, it reminded me of doing like a dressing change on someone. <laughs> like because I'm a nurse and so you have to like moisten the cheesecloth with the um, basting mixture otherwise the skin might pull off with it so anyway that's what I did and now I'm gonna put this back in the oven for an hour or an hour and a half and I'm gonna keep on basting it so here's the turkey stock that I made last night so the good thing about making it the night before is that you can put it in the refrigerator and give it time for all the fat to harden up so I'm gonna go ahead and um, scoop that out but I'm going to put it in a dish because we'll use that to make our roux for the gravy. So my sweet potatoes are done. I drained those. Uh, the original recipe I got for this is from Food Network. Um, I'll find a link to it and post it down below. It's from 2010. So the only modification I make is I put more brown sugar in it just because I don't think two tablespoons is enough. I add half a cup and I don't add nuts to the top, I add marshmallows instead. So in here, I'm going to put half a stick of butter, two beaten eggs, here's my masher. I'm gonna put half a cup of brown sugar, some cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and a little bit of salt. 
And then I have my baking dish prepared here. It's just a eight by eight Pyrex with some cooking spray. Okay, so the sweet potato casserole is here. Uh, I'm not gonna put the marshmallows on top of it yet. I always wait until it's almost baked and then I pull it out of the oven and put those on. So I'm just gonna cover this like loosely with some foil and then I'm gonna mix up my broccoli casserole and then I'm gonna go take a shower. So this is a new to me recipe. I've never tried it before, but it's an, it's an Alton Brown recipe and I've never tried any of his recipes that have been bad. So uh, for the broccoli casserole in this bowl, I have half a cup of mayonnaise, half a cup of sour cream. The recipe calls for yogurt, but a lot of the comments said that you could um, substitute sour cream. Um, what else is in here? A third of a cup of ranch. The recipe called for blue cheese dressing, but most people here except me don't like blue cheese dressing, so I used ranch. Two eggs, half a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of pepper, and then the flavor pack from this chicken ramen. So I'm gonna whisk this up, and then it says in this bowl I have to combine the broccoli and the broken up noodles. So we'll see, I'm excited to try this. All right, Adam's basting the turkey. Good work. A little in the booty hole. Yeah, thanks for always keeping it inappropriate here. Disturbing everybody. Yeah. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? We think how good it would be if you let me do the smoker. Yeah, we'll have to do that next year. Okay, so I also mixed the cheese in with the wet ingredients and broke up the noodles so i'm going to mix this all up and get it into a casserole dish okay so block broccoli the broccoli casserole the broccoli casserole is done so i'm just going to cover this with some foil and then this needs to bake for an hour um before we eat i might sprinkle a little bit of extra cheese on top too all right so our turkey's done we just checked the temperature so we're just going to cover it with some foil well we're going to give it one last baste cover it with foil and let it rest all right, so I went ahead and added the broth to the dressing mixture. Um, the recipe calls for one cup. I do not think that's enough at all. I mean, if you like a really dry dressing, I guess you could add one cup. Um, but I added closer to two and maybe even a little bit more. I did not have to season this really at all. Normally I would season it with salt and pepper, but since this is already flavored bread, I went ahead and just left it as is. I did taste it and it tastes fine. I added a little bit more pepper, but if you're using seasoned bread, don't add any salt until you taste it. So I have a baking dish in the oven right now that has some butter melting in it. Um, I went ahead and put the broccoli in the oven too because that has to cook for an hour. And then once the butter in that dish is melted, I'll kind of swirl it around, put the stuffing in and get that in the oven. So I'm also working on the glaze for the ham. I'm just using the packet that came with it and I am um, gonna simmer it with a little bit of water until it's thickened. Don't pay attention to my stove. It is filthy because I've been cooking all day. <laughs> Here's the casserole dish that I'm gonna put the dressing in. So there's melted butter on the bottom, obviously. I just put it in the oven to melt. So I'm gonna transfer the stuffing into there. All right, so I added a little bit of pineapple and the glaze over the ham, and I'm just gonna put the lid back on and that will go for another half an hour. All right, so it's 11.15. I set out all of the appetizers. So um, I do have a cheese ball that I made earlier this week. Uh, this will be coming in a video uh, later this week for favorite holiday cheese balls. It's just a cheddar cheese ball with pecans. And then I have my cheeses here. Uh, Ritz crackers. These are just some cheddar beef sticks that I cut up. These are uh, like Asiago pepper, or not Asiago pepper, Asiago cheddar cheese crisps from Aldi. Some wheat thins. Uh, you can see we already tried the cranberry salsa and it is delicious. And then I have black olives, sweet pickles, dill pickles, and green olives stuffed with cheddar. Okay, and then next I'm gonna get the mashed potatoes going. So I just have these uh, in there with a cup of water and I'm going to cook these on manual pressure for 12 minutes. All right, so the mashed potatoes are done. I'm gonna whip those up. I got some butter for the potatoes. There's my stock for the gravy. Adam's gonna carve the turkey and then I need to make the gravy, but my side dishes are in here. They are just about done. Whoa. 
All right, so I'm making the gravy in my roasting pan. So I have the turkey fat in there with some butter and some flour. This is the drippings from the turkey that I'm putting in there now. So I'm gonna use that first. And then I'll use the broth that I made last night to do the rest. See how much fat is in there? Well, because I use like 36 of butter to baste it, that's why. All right, so it's 12.30, we're in the home stretch. We got mashed potatoes, those are done. Sorry, it's loud in here. Gravy, rolls, chicken noodles. I cut up the ham. This is dressing, broccoli casserole. Adam is carving the turkey. It turned out so, so good. I made some good old Kraft mac and cheese. And then we have some sides in here. All right, come eat. Everyone come eat. Chance of Adam doing that than me. <laughs> no, that, I'd say you equally both have a terrible chance of doing it. Yeah. I well, I, there's only one thing that I know. There's the one we always used to say when I was younger. God is great. God is good. Yeah. Thank you for our food. Yeah, Amen. Like that. That's the only thing I will ever remember. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to say what we have since they're... We're the portion. I tried to do this before and then everyone like stampeded out here. So <laughs> we got mashed potatoes the in the Instant Pot. Uh, gourmet Kraft Mac and Cheese for the children. Turkey. The turkey turned out, turned out really, really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did. You sound like you're like Adam. <laughs> He's like, uh, and then we got stovetop stuffing, sausage stuffing, ham, broccoli casserole, gravy. There's like, there's like a lot of gravy over there, so eat up. Uh, rolls, corn casserole, sweet potatoes, uh, green bean casserole. We have way too much food. Um, chicken noodles. You don't have to be quiet. And uh, deviled eggs, pinwheels. I already showed you all the cheese. Cranberry sauce. This is pink fluff. I think that's it. So I'm gonna eat. All right, here's my plate. I'm gonna go eat. It looks delicious. All right, let me show you the desserts. So Karen made her pistachio dessert. I think she gave me this recipe um, so I can type it out if you want it. It's basically like pecan crust with pistachio pudding and whipped topping. Here's the banana cream pie. I made, Adam's mom made a chocolate cherry cake. That's really good. Uh, Miranda made a pumpkin pie, which no one has eaten yet. She also made sugar cookies. These are like really good soft sugar cookies. And then here's my cherry pie, which is almost gone. It turned out really good. Uh, I forget what these are called. Peanut butter, thumbprints maybe, and Rice Krispie treats. Yum. All right. What's your name? Elijah. How are you related to Connor? Because we're cousins. Oh, okay. And how old are you? Eight. And what are you thankful for? I am thankful for my friends, my family, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, which is pretty much my family. I'm thankful for chips and everything else. Chips, that's a good one. I'm thankful for chicken nuggets and fries. <laughs> you don't need to say that. Um, I'm thankful for pets, which I don't have any. <laughs> Five goldfishes. Five. Four. I have four. And uh, I'm thankful for Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm thankful for Luna Lovegood, oh. Lucy Scamander, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley. What, would, what was your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? Uh, being with my friends and family. No, what food? Oh, well, then probably the macaroni and cheese. Oh, good. Obviously. What? How old are you? Seven. What's your name? Connor. What are you thankful for? Everything. Everything? Mm -hmm. My family, my friends. What was your favorite? How, money, house. Your, your, okay. What was your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? Um, noodles? Mashed potatoes? Cookies. Cookies? Can I have one? What's your name? Adeline. How are you related to Kira and Connor? And Eli. <laughs> you're, you're their cousin? Yeah. How old are you? I have another one. Six. What are you thankful for this year? Christmas. You're thankful for Christmas? That's a good one. What, what was your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? What did you like to eat the best today? Chicken. Turkey? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
How old are you, Kira? Ten. What are you thankful for this year? Um, I was thankful for I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm thankful for that. Uh -huh. I'm thankful for my friends and my family that I've met. And yeah. And what was your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? Uh, chicken, not chicken, turkey. Yeah. Turkey, mashed potatoes, and noodles. Turkey mashed potatoes and noodles. What are you doing? Just you're just grabbing a piece of pie and eating it. Get <laughs> out! Whoa, get down! So I'm working on cleaning up the leftovers. Here's the turkey. I actually took the turkey carcass and boiled it to make stock out of it uh, because I want to make turkey soup with it. So this is actually what's left, and I was actually able to pull all of this meat off after I boiled it. And so the turkey sock is actually out on the deck cooling. This is the ham bone. I always save that to make ham and beans. And then this is the ham that we have left. I'll probably make ham salad out of that. All right, so it's about 7 p.m. Everyone has gone home and I am going to make uh, turkey soup with the turkey broth that I made. I just decided I'm gonna do it tonight because the kitchen is already dirty and I have everything out, so why not? So I have in this stock pot a stick of butter, uh, one large onion, some carrots and some celery chopped up with some fresh herbs in there. I think I had like rosemary and thyme. So next I'm going to put in some rice. I think this is jasmine rice, but um, I'm just going to use the whole container because there's not that much left in there. Let that uh, you know kind of brown up a little bit and then pour my turkey broth in. So I added some uh, turkey broth. I don't know if I'll need to add more or not. Um, the rice will obviously bulk up once it cooks and it'll probably cook for about 30 minutes or so. But I also added, I found a bag of frozen mixed vegetables in the refrigerator or in the freezer. So I went ahead and added those too because I wanted to bulk up the veggies a little bit. So I'm not gonna add the shredded turkey yet until um, the rice cooks because I don't want to cook it more and get it tough. All right, so the turkey rice vegetable soup is done. I tasted it. It was, it's very good. I didn't really have to add that much seasoning to it. I just, I think just because the stock already had so much seasoning. Um, so I did add a little bit of sweet corn in there in addition to the mixed vegetables because we have that in the freezer that I froze from the summer and then I added one can of um, diced tomatoes that I drained. So um, this made quite a bit, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is package this up into jars, and then I texted our family and said, would you like some turkey rice soup? And they said yes, so I'll deliver it tomorrow. And then uh, the only other thing I wanna do is package up the rest of my turkey broth. That's gonna go in the freezer. Um, I just did one over here so far so I always label the top because you will never remember what kind of stock is in there if you don't label it so I just want to address this in this video because I know I'll get questions about can you freeze stock in mason jars and yes you can I do it all the time so not only mason jars but I save a lot of jars like for example this is a pickle jar it has C on the top which means there's chicken broth in there uh, this one is chicken broth also so I save a lot of different jars, as you can see, um, and freeze different stocks in them. That way I always have stock on hand when I wanna make something. So here's my turkey stock. Uh, the only thing I wanna caution you on is make sure that you leave enough headspace in the top of the jar because as it freezes, the stock will expand. And I have had one of these crack on me before. So you just wanna make sure you leave about an inch of headspace in the top. This is actually an old salsa container from Costco <laughs> so yes I know I'm a I'm a crazy stock lady but um, there's some beef stock back there too so now I actually have beef stock chicken stock and turkey stock and this will last me all winter it tastes so much better and I won't have to buy it from the store all right so I just finished packing up all of this turkey rice soup it made a ton so it made this container this jar that jar this container, this container, that jar, uh, these two jars in this container. So I'll have a lot to share and probably some to freeze as well. 
All right, so it is currently, what time is it? 10 o'clock and we are getting ready to hit the hay after this uh, busy fun day of Thanksgiving. But I wanted to give you a recap of the recipes just because I'm not sure if I did that <laughs> earlier in the video or not. So uh, what I made, rolls and butter, those uh, Rhodes frozen rolls are the best in my opinion, super easy and delicious. Um, I also did the new recipe of the holiday cranberry jalapeno salsa with cream cheese. Delicious. I would make that again in a heartbeat. Uh, the turkey was like 10 out of 10 for sure. Um, Adam was like, not like shocked at how good it was, but he had been telling me like, I want to smoke a turkey. And I was like, no, I really want to try to brine this and make this recipe. So I will definitely be doing this again. It was a winner. Uh, mashed potatoes were good. Sausage stuffing. I feel like I put too much butter in the pan and it was a little bit soggy and a little bit too rich. So I probably wouldn't do that again. But other than that, I've made that recipe before and it was really good. I also feel like I would probably just use plain bread and not the herb stuffing just because I think the plain bread is better for that recipe. Uh, the broccoli casserole we did not like. So this was the Alton Brown recipe. I just thought it was really dry. Um, I will acknowledge that I probably overcooked it a little bit, but I still thought it was dry and didn't have much flavor. I would not make that again. Uh, banana cream pie, cherry pie, both delicious. So thank you so much for watching this first day of Vlogmas with me, my Thanksgiving uh, cook with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you for spending the day with us and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.